Hello, my name is Philipp Hochmeier. I'm actor, thin, cinema and theater actor, and I'm playing in the film Tomcat. Here, Tomcat. And it's a homosexual love story about a couple who's living a crisis. And yeah, that's the story. Living with a cat and living a crisis together. Surviving a crisis. <laughs> I'm Handel Klaus and I am the director, writer of the screenplay. And um, yeah, it's uh, my cat, Tony as Moses <laughs> and um, Philip and Lucas playing Andreas and Stefan and we share their life yeah. and love and time and house yeah yeah das war das Probespiel aus jetzt wäre dann der Streicher Probespiel für Flöte Akademie Das müssen doch alle hören, nicht nur die Bläser. Hat er recht. Moses, du bist ja auch musikalisch. Gott zur Musik. Da alle abstimmen drüber. Wir sind aber Case, denn entschuldige. Das ist schwierig, weil der Chef danach schon in Berlin ist. Da muss man es halt verschieben. Ach, man hat ein echtes Gefühl, es arbeitet gegen uns. Ich sicher nicht, ich bin bei euch. Kissen bitte umdrehen, Katzenseite, Menschenseite. Menschenseite? Das gehört ja alles dem Moses eigentlich, gell? Alles voll am Ohr. Stefan ist der Weinschaufen. Das macht er nicht schon so gut. Hände waschen. Hm? Schau mal rüber. Na, bitte nicht. Ich mag keine Katzen. Ja, das ist bekannt. Ich finde das echt unhygienisch. Ja, das ist ein sauberes Tier. Ich habe einen Hunger. Heiß, heiß, heiß. <lacht> Danke. Well, first of all, thank you very much for doing this interview with us. <laughs> thank and you. My, my first question was, how did you come up with the question? Was that something that developed over time or was it very spontaneous? Uh, come up with the story, sorry. Come up with the story. Was that something that developed over time or was that something that came very spontaneously? To me, it came like an accident. <laughs> I, it was the day after uh, having finished my first film, Merz, March. And I was uh, strolling with my DOP, Gerald Kerklitz, through the city of Innsbruck. And it just, I don't know, came to my mind. And it was so clearly there, and I told him about it. And from then on we kept talking about it. And I was developing it uh, through a long time. I had many drafts of, of the screenplay. And um, actually, it, it, yeah, it changed a bit over the years because I needed to uh, confront the characters uh, in a way that was not so clear in the beginning as to the abyss because uh, the thing that happens and that, is, that lurks within us um, when that happens and the characters uh, are confronted with guilt, they, um, they really have to go into it, into that search, search mov movement. And uh, at first I had made it too easy for, for myself and for the characters. I had kept it more of a secret and now they're really working on it. Mm. And I think that is what is also speaking for their relationship and what's part of their relationship and part of their love, to be able to confront each other with questions mm. or with um, states of, I mean, emotional states that are in a way questioning, inquisitive, but in a, in a uh, body language uh, also a kind of um, commu communication. Well, the search inside of themselves, how did you experience that? Like, how did you approach the role and how was it for you to, to question the character? There is no character, no question. There is a very intimate, it's in, in, in a very big intimacy between a homosexual couple and that was the research and the characters came through our bodies and through this literature and through the situation we had together with this cat in this house. We stayed in the house for a very long time. We lived there with the cat for a long time. And 
the living there made the characters and made the story alive. So that's it. And I think it's a story about guilt and forgiveness. And, and, and this research was uh, real and was happening in this together, you know, in this situation together. It was a very atmospheric uh, thing. We were looking very hard for a place. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> We were looking very hard for a place that would have, that would have a um, sort of a kind of soul, uh, an old building inviting uh, that could be threatening at times. If you think of the uh, the black room in the end, when you or towards the end when you enter the void, <laughs> or uh, I, I, we wanted to have a large garden, a wild garden for Moses to stroll through to enjoy his catness and uh, be his own sweet self and we wanted to have him as our third protagonist so it really had to be a cat's home, very much of a cat's home. Mm. And to adapt the cat's life with our lives and it's while this research the characters were and the story were built so I think mm. you know it became alive. Yeah. So it was a bit of a work in progress yes, as well, yes, developing yes, yes. while filming? By chance, one of the the, 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 the uh, uh, supporting actors, supporting yeah. actors supporting lost 30 kilos and we had to make the scenes again a 30 year later. Kilos. 30 kilos. Yeah. And we had to, we had to, to, yeah. to redo the scenes uh, a year later. So we had a big uh, period to, to develop this, this, this life together, you know? Well, I must say that it was not... It was very well prepared and a work of progress it was before shooting started really because we had to um, establish uh, something that we could enter and that we could uh, take for a living really so we were very careful with um, choosing also the costumes uh, worn by everyone we were using private costumes as far as we could I thought that would help and we were even working with things that cannot be seen like books that they read and they're out of frame you know but I thought it would in a way maybe <laughs> be there as well we try to mean, live the film that's it we try to find an, a universe we could live this situation together yeah. And sometimes we slept even in this house. Yeah, right. We lived with the cats. Yeah, we had and a nice kitchen, so we yeah. were cooking yes, for so. each other. Well, it is a very atmospheric movie, mm. and the beginning is very paradise-like. You really have the feeling this is the ideal home, with a garden, a house that you described, everything. And it feels like people are living there and they're just happy. And, well, what I found interesting about this was the relationship, because I had the feeling that it was well, it, I mean, it is a gay relationship, but why did you choose for a gay relationship? Because everything around it seemed completely normal. And I was wondering, actually, could you also exchange it for a man and a woman? Or would you say it needs to be two men? No, absolutely not. I had even thought of, it was, uh, originally I had thought of a, of a heterosexual couple. And um, I think that, when you say normal, for me, gayness being gay is normal. Normal is not the right word. I also just thought about that I a mean, second later. Yeah, really, it's just two people who have a, their own taste. This home expresses their, well, their love for paintings and for beautiful things, for beautiful furniture, and they read a lot and they love to cook, so they have a nice kitchen and they love their garden, obviously. So, and. If they love to, well, if they have to, if they prefer the male body or the, the female body as a, as a sexual partner, doesn't really count to me. Uh, what I think is the case with, with two men, I even thought of two women at a point instead of two men, is that I think that you don't have this classic battle of uh, inferior role uh, model woman, you know, uh, which is which is very complex, and you have more of a. 
it now becomes out how should, more balanced in a way of of um, what's the word you you have two two partners that are almost I don't know how, how I can say this maybe you can get what <laughs> what I want to say without <laughs> me having said it but I well maybe I understand right that you sort of try to get rid of the structures of society as yeah, well right. that normally yeah. structure a heterosexual oh, relationship yeah, thank you so much <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> well, um, yeah. And yeah. well, that was something I found very interesting because I have the feeling that that is something you see very often nowadays in queer cinema. This step towards showing, well, what I just called normality, mm -hmm. um, that they have a life like everyone else. Yeah. And I have the feeling that that is something that is very recent in queer cinema. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And that may be also ex as explanation for why I said normal. I, I think in German, mm -hmm. gewöhnlich, I don't yeah. know, usual probably you would say. Usual, yeah. And yeah. I mean, they have a very happy but very usual life. Yeah. I had the feeling. Yeah. So, why did you, why did you wanted to have a twist in there, though? Because this is what uh, really puts everything into question. And if we love another one, this is there, and it's within ourselves as well. And we have to live with it. And I think it's necessary, absolutely necessary, to look at it and to be, yeah, to be aware of it, that it's there. And to love someone also means to love what could be in him. So it was a it is a, a love story <laughs> for me it is mm -hmm. and it's also an animal story <laughs> because there are things that are animalistic and it's a music uh, story because music helps us to enter something that you don't have words for mm. express emotions yeah. yeah when you hear schubert's first uh, you know this um, rehearsal of Schubert that Andreas, uh, Philipp's character, also listens to. There is so much there that you couldn't talk about, really, but it's there thanks to Schubert. <laughs> so it was so, so beautiful to shoot because our technicians were among the musicians and they said, wow, this is so beautiful to be so close to the, to the instruments. <laughs> I recall now. But yeah, it's um, to love someone is is a very 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 big thing. <laughs> and yesterday you had the premiere yeah. at uh, Cinema International or Kino International. How did it go? How did the audience react? Did you have a Q and A afterwards? A no. very short one. It existed of one question. The question was. A question I must not say now because it would spoil and I don't want to, <laughs> to spoil. I want to leave everyone who can see the film with it, with the film while seeing it. But uh, <laughs> reactions were very fresh and very alive and, and yeah. I was really happy because it's a very silent movie and a very, very intimate movie and people stayed with us and I was very happy about it. Yeah, they were very with us. It was very, very beautiful to, to have this, the, the hall was full and, and it was very attentive and very, they were tender. Tender, yeah, yeah. yeah it was a, ten, a tender audience, yeah. yeah. Right. All right. Thank you very much for this interview. <laughs> and, um, well, yeah, how my first interview in English. <laughs>